a great change is at hand. The fact that John F. Kennedy embraced the concept of civil rights, not just for the United States, but for the world, is the hallmark of his legacy. Uh, in fact, I, I would even say that uh, it was his activities with civil rights that probably led to his death. Why do you say JFK was killed because of civil rights? Because I think that was the most controversial thing that he aligned himself with. There were too many deaths around that period, and all of them had something to do with civil rights. Long before he was ambassador, congressman, or mayor, Andrew Young served at the side of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In 1960, he was registering voters in a parking lot on Chicago's South Side when he came across a young senator from Massachusetts. He was running for president. And I made my way out there and I got fairly close to the, the truck that he was on. It was unusual for white presidential candidates to show up. Your judgment of what you want this community to be? Kennedy Johnson handily won the African-American vote on promises of equality and justice. Where did he stand at the beginning of his presidency? I really don't believe that John F. Kennedy understood civil rights at the beginning of his presidency. And so everything that happened was a rude awakening, but he knew what was morally right. The question is whether the world will exist half slave or half free. Kennedy, the senator, had followed the boycotts and Supreme Court victories that ended segregation, but that was from a distance. Kennedy, the president, was forced to pay closer attention, according to presidential historian Douglas Brinkley. When the African Americans backed in 1960, John F. Kennedy, it's a big constituency for him now, and you have to feed your constituents. By 1962, reaction to the civil rights protests erupted in violence across the South, nowhere more chilling than in Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham has become Birmingham. Between 1962 and 1963, 60 homes, businesses, and churches were burned. Boycotts and protests sent scores of people to jail. In May, Birmingham children took to the streets. That's when a nation and its president witnessed the cruelty of segregation. Meanwhile, President Kennedy had been working behind the scenes to find a solution. What John Kennedy did that uh, was quite visionary. He realized he had no leverage with the Congress or with the governments in the South. But he called in um, Hilton and Marriott. He called in the owners of Woolworth and uh, Grants and, and uh, uh, J.C. Penney. But he found a ways to mobilize the private sector because that's where our movement was doing the most damage. Everybody talks about the marches and the dogs and the fire hoses, but the critical issue there was that for 90 days, 300,000 black people and many white people did not buy anything but food or medicine. So the economy had shut down. They had missed a whole quarter of business and they were anxious to get their businesses moving again. By June, progress was being made, but then Governor George Wallace took a last stand, blocking two black students from entering the University of Alabama. President Kennedy sent in the National Guard to protect them, and on June 11th, went further than he ever had before. If an American, because his skin is dark, cannot eat lunch in a restaurant open to the public, if he cannot send his children the best public school available, if he cannot vote for the public officials who represent him, then who among us would be content to have the color of his skin changed and stand in his place? Who among us would then be content with the counsels of patience and delay? I shall ask the Congress of the United States to act, to make a commitment it is not fully made in this century to the proposition that race has no place in American life or law. He was very reluctant to put a civil rights bill before Congress because he knew it was gonna alienate the Southern senators and congressmen. And 
that could hurt him in the next election, and also he felt it would deter them from passing his other domestic initiatives. As predicted, Southern Democrats vowed to block the civil rights bill. But Kennedy's assassination changed the political dynamics. Okay, President Lyndon Johnson gold. seized the opportunity From and five days Senate after Kennedy's death, States. appealed to a joint session of Congress. No memorial oration or eulogy could more eloquently honor President Kennedy's memory than the earliest possible passage of the Civil Rights Bill for which he fought so long. It would take another seven months, but on July 2nd, 1964, Kennedy's bill was signed into law, ultimately fulfilling a promise he'd made on the campaign trail of 1960. He was president when some of the most impactful civil rights events happened in this nation. He really was one who wanted to understand and um, and he learned with us. For CBSNews.com, Michelle Miller, Atlanta.